Well, this one should be interesting. Welcome to another polarising, morally dubious edition of Defending the Despised, the ongoing series where I take a second look at unpopular or hated parts of the Doctor Who universe to see whether they deserve another chance from fans. This time I'm tackling my biggest subject yet, a constant lightning rod of controversy and arguments. I'm talking about the 13th Doctor era, starting in 2017 and ending in 2022. The 13th Doctor is by far the most divisive incarnation of the character, and her era follows suit, often criticised for plot developments, mixed messaging and poor acting. But is there also a lot of good to come out of the era? Is it unfairly shunned? Well grab your phallic tardis console toy and whip out the Geneva Convention because it's time to defend the 13th Doctor era. So yeah, it's been a while since the last Defending the Despised. As such, I need to address a couple of things that have cropped up. Yes, I'm aware of the Christopher Eccleston interview. Yes, I'm also aware that the second Russell T Davis era is coming to BBC One in 2023. Yes, I will continue to do Defending the Despised through that era once it concludes. Now, many of you have been very patient in waiting for these videos, and for that I'm very grateful. Others of you have not been so patient, to the point where I'm actually taking time out of this video to talk about it. Let me say this once again, since apparently it was not made clear when this video series began. Defending the Despised has no set schedule. Videos are done when they're done, and will be released when they're done. In case you haven't noticed, I've been more than a little busy these last few months. If you haven't noticed, wake up already! I attended Gallifrey 1, London Film and Comic Con, made a very complicated review of a Series 6 episode, released additional videos in March beyond my regular workload, did my regular workload, which consists of a review every week despite conventions and other difficulties, one of those difficulties being moving into a small broom cupboard in the heart of London, which costs about £2,000 a week, not including my various bills including, but not limited to, Wi-Fi, electricity, heating, my Netflix subscription, my annual membership to Adult DVD Empire, my Loot Crate subscription, minting NFTs on the blockchain, Amazon Prime, praying to my Lord Beelzebub, and buying copious amounts of Funko Pops. All things I cannot afford through defending the despised videos alone. In addition to that, People don't seem to realise how much work actually goes into these videos. Here's the process. I watch the entire series, which, for those of you at home, is around 10 episodes at 50 minutes each. That's roughly 10 hours straight if I was watching them all in one day. Which I'm not. Oh, but it gets better, because I am also writing up a synopsis of the important plot points of the series, as well as writing down character notes, themes, etc etc. Which means I'm pausing the episodes so I can write. Once the series is completed, I have to finish my notes and analysis, along with buying every relevant Funko Pop, which also means raising the necessary funds to purchase them. And then I watch the next series and repeat the process. Yes, I had to finish watching series 12 before I recorded the series 11 review. Why? So I don't let my immediate feelings about it be the ones that I write. I give it time to settle and see how much of it is memorable along with analysing the quality and value of all the Funko Pops. 
it helps the analysis and the judgement of the topic of the video. And on top of all of that, I then have to record it and edit it all down to a single video for your consumption, which takes about a week per 5 minutes of video due to all the intricate edits required to talk over someone else's piece of media. And oh yes, I need to also have my own life outside of it. Like that time I had to go pick up my brother from the train station and he wanted McDonald's on the way home, which meant driving over to the other side of town and waiting in heavy traffic. But when we got there it turned out the ice cream machine was broken and they were all out of burgers. So we had to drive to Burger King, which took another hour to get to. When we got there, my brother wasn't even hungry anymore and I had forgotten my wallet, because I only pay for things using crypto, so we had to drive 2 hours to get back home. That was one day I could have spent working, but I couldn't because I have other commitments. So when will the next Defending the Despise be out? When it's done. I'm sorry if this is coming off as ungrateful or needlessly angry, since I'm not. I love that you all care about this series and want to see more videos, so I'm doing everything in my power to get it done. But it's not easy and it doesn't happen overnight. Asking me when the next one is going to come is not making it get done any faster. I have warned you all before that I am in unfamiliar territory now and it's harder for me to skip through stuff that I've never seen before because it's harder to parrot cold takes for quick and easy viewer agreement. And I appreciate offers of people to point out what's filler and what isn't, but I have to make that evaluation for myself. And please, please, Please avoid spoilers or telling me, avoid this episode, it sucks. It's defending the despised, not defending the despised except for this episode or this topic. Every episode will be watched, every character evaluated, everything will be given a fair chance to impress or disappoint. Like I said, I haven't watched these episodes before and I want the chance to be surprised by things that happen. Stop telling me what's going to happen, you're only gonna piss me off. The thing is, I want to have fun while I'm doing this. Constantly badgering me for the next videos does not equal fun. It makes it a chore for me, and if it becomes a chore for me, then I will be disinclined to work on it. And now, with all of that said, let's get to defending the 13th Doctor era already. But before we get into today's video, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Spoon Baboons. If you're not already aware, the future is now old man. Web 2.0 is in the past and it's time to embrace Web 3.0. It's vital to join the millions of people around the world who are on the blockchain and enjoying all the benefits of the decentralized online economy, like NFTs, better known as non-fungible tokens. When you buy a spoon at the supermarket, it's not unique. It has been factory printed along with thousands of other identical spoons. But what if I were to tell you there was a way to actually own a unique, one-of-a-kind spoon. That's where Spoon Baboons come in. Spoon Baboons were created by two broke college students who wanted to put the fun back into non-fungible tokens. Each NFT is lovingly handcrafted with different colours and patterns adorning the incredibly groundbreaking baboon design. So no two spoons are the same, there are literally infinite possibilities. Thanks to a cutting edge artificial intelligence, you can generate your very own unique spoon baboon that cannot be replicated or copied by right clicking and downloading. And what's even better than that is that as the spoon baboon market booms, you can even make money by selling your spoon to others on the blockchain. The first drop is just around the corner and if you sign up now, you'll have exclusive access to the first ever wave of Spoon Baboons. All you have to do is go to www.spoonbaboons.com.net.org forward slash Harbo Walms definitely didn't create this NFT and it definitely isn't a rug pull scam and enter all your credit card details for your chance to join the Spoon Baboon revolution. It's as simple as putting in the long number on the front, the expiration date and the three numbers on the back. That's all you need to do. I've already minted my exclusive Harbo Spoon Baboon so come and join me in the family if you're hungry enough to handle it. So again a big thank you to Spoon Baboons and let's get on with the video. Possibly one of the most memorable parts of the 13th Doctor era is the 
and this moment reminded me of the time my boss Alan told me to come in for an extra long shift as it was in my contract to work additional hours if required. Yet as soon as the clock hit 4pm, I saw him sneaking out the back to go home early. He was supposed to be working until 5 past 4, so he was clearly breaching the contract and neglecting his duties. I had to manage the shop for an extra 5 minutes all on my own while he abused the system to get home early. And what makes it even more disgusting is that I was threatened by HR for reporting him. They told me that it wasn't even an issue, that it was only 5 minutes and that I shouldn't waste their time with pointless reports. That was the moment I completely lost faith in the system, because that was 5 long minutes he still got paid for. So the cool message and moral of this story really resonated with me, and I especially found it relatable when The reason the climax of this character arc works so well is because of Graham's loss at the beginning of the series. He lost Grace and blamed Sim Shaw, which I can understand and respect. I know the pain of loss and how it can eat away at you. Last year my so called friend Kevin came over and knocked over my rare limited edition Joker Funko Bob, breaking the bobblehead. It took me months to forgive him, so I can easily put myself in Graham's shoes here and sympathise with how he overcomes the anger to break the cycle and stop himself becoming as bad as Sim Shah. Lastly, I think the most misunderstood part of the 13th Doctor era is the use of And that's it for another deep diving edition of Defending the Despised. I know the 13th Doctor era is a very controversial period of Doctor Who history, but I hope that this thought provoking and well researched video was able to provide some new insight and analysis of the episodes and the importance of the messaging within them. It receives a lot of unnecessary hate, so I thought it was about time for Defending the Despised covering the 13th Doctor's character and her time in the spotlight. Please do not ask me when the next Defending the Despised video is coming. I will not respond and I will report you to the cyber police for harassment. You have been warned. And I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my diamond level patron Fallon Cortez and all my gold level patrons Alex Marston, Basil Disco PhD, Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Franz Horn AK Line Vortex, Herner Verzog, Luke underscore SY, and Stefan Never Miller. Thank you so much for all the support.